1999, Deanna Ave recorded a mysterious sound that was heard all over the Pacific Ocean. It has been heard annually since then, and yet still there is no explanation for it. This was the sound you just heard, and it was titled Julia. This just goes to show how much of the ocean we don't know, and how much remains undiscovered. The sheer size of the ocean provides endless opportunity for research. It is incredibly diverse. In 2010 alone, researchers discovered more than 5,000 new species. In the United States, the National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration, NOAA, is the federal agency focused on exploring the ocean. Exploration is also important to ensure sustainability of the Earth and to improve the well-being of future generations. Check out this hermaphrodite. The Napoleon Roth is over 3 meters long, with a design that varies with each fish, much like a fingerprint. The pink see-through fantasia is a sea cucumber, found a mile and a half deep in the Celebes Sea. This is a Monopus icebot crustacean. It is an ancient creature which has been on Earth for 300 million years. You might be familiar with their cousins, the pill bug. This fish is called Sacralus microparos, which is also known as fathead. Deep's exploration leads to new discoveries, theories, and ideas, including within the field of medicine. Cures for cancer, heart disease, bacterial infections, viruses, and more could possibly be found underwater. There is endless potential in the ocean because there is endless there is an endless amount of flora and fauna. Some examples of natural um, cures already in use include. A Caribbean sponge which generates compounds used to help fight the AIDS virus. Bryozoan, a tangled organism, yields a compound that is being tested as a cancer drug. Fish shaped like kites called skates have given insight to the treatment of vision loss. The blood cells of horseshoe crabs contain a chemical not found elsewhere that can defeat bacterial contamination in pharmaceuticals. Some cures currently under study include bone grafts from coral skeletons, pain relievers from sea snail venom, and infection fighting agents from shark skin. However, despite these benefits, the ocean is still virtually unexplored. The ocean could become the biological focus for 21st century medicine, which would also have economic benefits on society. At the same time, this might have negative effects on the oceans itself. For instance, between 30 and 40 percent of horseshoe crabs have been bled dry. With this said, the implications of the oceans in medical research could yield such positive effects for humanity that any dangers that exist will be well worth it. In addition, possible solutions for the world's energy and food deficiency and much more are more likely to be found in oceans nearby than in space. In the past, there has been excessive spending on space explorations but very minimal in ocean explorations, despite its close proximity. Space is distant, hostile, and barren. On the other hand, the oceans are helpful for concerns ranging from climate change to disease, reducing energy, mineral, and drinking water shortages, for strengthening industry, security, and defense against natural disasters, for learning more about geological history, and much more. The ocean has positive implications on global warming as well. The ocean acts as a carbon sink where algae and other species absorb CO2 in order to survive. If the ocean were to potentially absorb more CO2, this would slow global warming, but more research must be done. Further study of the ocean could also help predict tsunamis and earthquakes, which would save millions of lives. Various forms of energy could also be utilized upon further research, like tidal and wave energy. There are many ways to die under the water. There are many risks, from inside the palosphere or otherwise, that may arise despite careful planning. Deep sea diving is often done from the pilot sphere, which is a steel orb that acts as a source of oxygen, a heat source, and a shield from deep sea pressure. First off, implosion is when the diver miscalculates the design of his sphere and as the diver descends to the bottom of the ocean, he's stuck. Also, electrical fires can start among all the gadgets. 
Fires can spread quickly because of all the oxygen constantly being pumped into the sphere. Although a fire extinguisher is stored, it may not be enough to contain a sizable fire. In the case of viewpoint failure, cracks will develop on the viewpoint glass and then break. At this point, the water shoots in the sphere faster than the speed of sound. There's also the risk of hypothermia. This happens when the, weight, when the weights that carry you to the bottom of the ocean don't release, and the diver is stuck without a way to raise back to the surface. There's enough oxygen to last 60 hours, but the just above zero degree Celsius water will kill you long before then. If only one weight drops, the sphere will only ascend part way to the surface. A current may carry the sphere further into the ocean adrift until the crew has no more hopes of finding the missing diver. When the penetrator, which is a device that feeds power and control signals through the sphere, melts, the water jet erodes the interior of the penetrator. This allows the standing seawater to blast inside at 16,000 psi. In comparison, atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7 psi. Therefore, divers take many risks when descending to the bottom of the ocean in order to experience it firsthand. This is done for the benefit of society as a whole. However, should we really expect anyone to do this? At the same time, space explorations are just as dangerous as ocean explorations, and aquanauts don't have to descend to the bottom of the ocean themselves. New technology can be used so that no harm comes to the researchers. Ocean exploration can have major negative impacts on the environment. Deep sea mining, in particular, targets vast areas of deep ocean for mineral extraction. As of 2014, Nautilus Minerals, a Canadian mineral company, made an agreement with Papua New Guinea to mine for copper and gold in its territorial waters. A remote controlled machine that cuts the seabed, then sucks it to the surface, will be used for the mining. Chief among the in demand minerals to be mined are rare earth elements used to manufacture cell phones wind turbines, electric cars, and more. Negatively, deep sea mining would also temporarily choke off the oxygen over large areas of water due to immense sentiment plumes. For example, an entire species of coral would be obliterated, which could then have a larger impact on the whole surrounding ecosystem. However, the total utility and disutility of the mines will only truly be clear after they are open. Sound is equivalent to sight underwater. It is important for mating, hunting, and survival. There is not a single deaf vertebrae species. Unlike light, which dissipates quickly underwater, sound travels further and five times faster, which allows animals to communicate over long distances. However, humans cause a lot of sound pollution, including shipping traffic, oil extraction, sonar, and deep sea mining. Underwater, sound travels so far that it can be difficult to pinpoint the source, and even harder to avoid or outrun it. Whales, dolphins, and other marine animals who have been caught in the wake of sonar have died from cerebral hemorrhaging or have killed themselves to escape the overpowering noise. To improve the situation, better and quieter technology should be developed. Ocean products, especially fish, are a major food source worldwide. People eat four times as much fish than they did in 1950. For this reason, there are concerns to whether wild fish stocks will be able to survive increased exploitation. And there's an estimated 30% of fisheries worldwide that are overexploited or worse. The ocean provides utility for science in the fields of medicine, energy, the atmosphere, and more. The possible utility for humans cannot be precisely weighed, only speculated. And yet, the potential is endless. According to Mill's role utilitarianism, increased research within unfamiliar fields in the past has tended to provide unexpected benefits for society. Since space exploration has shown to provide invaluable information about the world around us, it would be plausible to assume the ocean would contain information just as invaluable, waiting to be discovered. However, in contrast to space exploration, it is possible that humans could severely damage the ocean and the creatures living in it. Ocean exploration is also dangerous for any aquanauts who choose to take the plunge. At the same time, it might also satisfy their thirst for knowledge. With this said, Ocean exploration doesn't have to be done by humans, and robots would be a much safer option. However, innovative discoveries for all of humanity would likely have positive consequences of more value than the harm that may result for the environment, and even that can be minimized. Therefore, there are more advantageous consequences to ocean exploration than the disutility that may affect ecosystems. According to utilitarianism, since there seems to be a net value of more pleasure than harm, 
It would be more for ocean exploration to increase in future years. Who knows what is really beneath the surface until we find out ourselves?